But if you look in the 17th and 18th century, a lot of the natural scientists and physicists, they were, in this country, they were all Anglican clergymen. Mendel, who discovered genetics, was a Catholic priest. There, there wasn't a big tension. And even in the time of Darwin, Darwin was welcomed by a lot of Christians. There was a Presbyterian apologist called Drummond, who were, wrote marvelous things how this was highly compatible with uh, uh, Christian views of creation. Because by no means did Christians always and everywhere believe that the world was made in six units of 24 hours. Augustine, St. Augustine, didn't believe that. As I, he said in his literal commentary in Genesis, that uh, that's, that's figurative, because the sun and the moon are only made on the fourth day. So there couldn't have been days and nights, in our sense, prior to the making of the sun and the moon. And this same thought was characteristic of the fathers and the early rabbis. But what is characteristic of the Christian doctrine of creation is a, a theological position, which is that God made everything that is, that all that is exists as gift and is wholly dependent on God, including space and time. So creation, in a sense, from that position, isn't what happened a long time ago. Creation is, is now, because if God made space and time, uh, time, the moment of creation for God is now. And hence, there's a terrific immediacy of God to creation in this scheme. Now, this is not something that science could contest, would even want to, because it's a theological and, to some extent, a, a metaphysical position. It's a position that, that there could have been nothing at all, really nothing, but because of God, there is the world as we know it.